Welcome to this training on checking in on students' social emotional well being. I'm Kim Neesmith, Data Governance and Privacy Director for the Louisiana Department of Education. During this training, we will explore questions to ask prior to providing mental health supports to students. We will review applicable laws related to administering a mental health screener. And we will recognize best practices when administering a mental health screener. School shootings and their increased frequency have made evident the need for more mental health supports for students. And this need has been amplified by COVID-19 and the uncertain nature of the day-to-day -day that we all are living in. From checking in on students daily when distance learning to the consideration of administering a universal mental health screening school or district-wide, educators want to, provide student, want to provide support for their students. But before doing so, it's very important to consider a few things and to ask yourself a few questions. For example, should parents be notified and provided an opportunity to opt out of mental health supports? Should parents provide consent before a student is administered a screener? What can be done to make sure we provide transparency and preserve trust while also helping students in this area? How will any data that's collected be protected? And what about PPRA? Does it come into play? PPRA, or the Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment, is a federal law. And in relationship to mental health screeners and supports, the Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment requires that parents consent prior to the administration of a survey that concerns any mental or psychological problems of the student or the student's family, or any illegal, antisocial, self-incriminating, or demeaning behavior. So if the survey has any questions that deal with any of those topics, parents must consent before the survey is provided. And that consent is not a notification, and then if the parent does not want the survey to happen for their child, they can opt out. This is an opt-in. In other words, before the screener or before the questions can be asked, the parent must actively say it is okay to do so. Additionally, parental notification of the survey and the opportunity to inspect any instrument and any instructional material used as part of an educational curriculum that covers these areas is required. So we must first notify parents that we're going to provide a survey that covers these areas and then we have to make sure that they can review the questions if they'd like to and then they have to uh, proactively say yes it is okay. That is what the Pro Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment affords parents in these situations. So best practices for educators. Educators are in the field because they love kids and they want to help kids. So we have to figure out how we can help students and at the same time follow best practices and adhere to state and federal laws. So first of all, Definitely do not administer a screener without support, with the support and guidance of your administrators. Your administrators need to make sure that they are checking off some boxes and making sure things are being handled at a higher level. A teacher should never go forward with these type of things without their support. Also, the school or the school system needs to make sure that they are communicating to the parent how the screener is gonna help identify any challenges the student is experiencing. Go ahead and tell the parents why they should do this, why it is a good idea, how it is going to be helpful, and so that they can understand that the goal there is to help kids. And then ensure that parental notification and make sure they have that opportunity to review and make sure you have informed consent prior to administering. And lastly, make sure that you don't try to analyze the results of a mental health screener a mental health professional must analyze those results. And so while there are many mental health screener templates out 
today and that are available online, it is important that um, a lay person doesn't try to analyze those results. We need to have somebody that's trained in that area analyzing the results and determining if there is a concern or not and what the next steps are. So take a moment to review a consent form that your school currently uses. How could it possibly be edited for the purpose of a mental health support consent? What would need to be changed? Can you take that consent, turn it into one for mental health supports and add that notification that's needed at the top? So if you would, stop the recording, go find that consent and see if you can turn it into something that could be used. This can be a tool that can help you and your school as you guys are trying to support students. Okay. And last thing, and this will end the training. Reflect for a moment. If your school is providing mental health supports to its students, is there someone you need to talk to to make sure that you are following best practices? Is there someone that you should share this training with just to get folks thinking about things that should be considered? Thank you so much for tuning in and for caring about students and for participating in this training.